Hello everyone, my name is JX from Poladron. Welcome to our product introduction video for the newly released DJI Zenmuse L1 sensor. So we've just received this demo unit from DJI a couple of days ago. And the product was launched in early 2021, but the uh, demo unit was just shipped and commercial units is expected to ship in the next couple of months. So in today, we will unbox the Zenmuse L1 and cover some of the key features for the sensor itself. So let's dive straight into it. All right. So let's open the box up. There's a few key components to it as seen here. It comes with the rugged hard waterproof case where first off the accessories you get a six months free trial to the DJI Terra. So DJI Terra is a software developed by DJI that will be able to process the LiDAR imagery and data from the Zenmius L1 itself. Of course we have the usual the product certification for the sensor, the quick start guide. Um, DJI also gave a quick cloth for us to wipe the sensor and clean off any dust for it. Uh, and let's move to the sensor itself. So this is how it looks like, the Zenmuse L1, where it has an integrated gimbal on the sensor. So opening up the cover, the protect protective case. And also the protective sticker. So here you would see the first and the core component of the Zenmus L1 itself. It's the mid-70 LiDAR sensor from Livebox, this reflective piece of component. And then you have an integrated 1-inch CMOS sensor RGB camera, as well as a visual assistant camera over here, which is used when there is, say, if you lost GNSS signal, if it fails, at least the aircraft accuracy will not be affected up to a certain period of time. So that's what the auxiliary vision sensor it's used for. Because internally as well, it has a high precision industrial grade IMU sensor, which all of it, these few core components forms into a whole integrated unit from DJI. All right, so before I start and jump into the key features of the Zenmuse L1 itself, I'd just like to touch on a bit of a basic principle on how LiDAR works for those that are maybe new to the industry or are not familiar with it yet. So the way I like to explain how LiDAR works is very similar to radar technology, where if you look at the old movies, um, James Bond movie and so on, there's always this radar or submarines that rotates around and pulses out with radio waves. It hits something and then it bounces back to the sensor. And the distance from the object to the item that is the waves are bouncing off, there is a time taken called the time of flight. So that's how radar detects distance of an object away from, say, submarines. And very similar to LiDAR, instead of pulsing out with radio waves. Instead, it is using light rays, which of course is a lot faster, a lot more higher frequency. Uh, but in terms of principle itself, it's exactly the same way how it works. So let's jump into this unit and really explore the key features of the product itself now. we we'll first look at the Livebox sensor. So first, just a back, bit of background about Livebox itself. It is a sensor that was formed internally by DJI themselves through their open innovation program. So it was originally made for autonomous vehicles or cars and so on on ground but DJI being the innovative company that they are they managed to adapt it for drone usage and area surveying usage as well so the main benefit of it of course is it is able to generate equivalent kind of data acquisition and output compared to traditional LiDAR at a fraction of the cost that we are used to in the industry so covering some key specs on the LiDAR sensor itself first the LiDAR sensor has a scan rate of 240 points per second, meaning it sends out and receives back 240,000 points per second. Um, it supports tree return, which allows it to penetrate moderate foliage and vegetation. It has a detection range of 450 meters for an object with 80% reflectivity and 190 meters with a, for an object with 10% reflectivity. Uh, what that means is, of course, if you are scanning over solid ground with high reflectivity, um, you are able to get much longer and further detection range compared to, say, if you are scanning over a wet ground uh, after a rain, your detection range would be a lot lower. It also supports repetitive and non-repetitive scanning patterns, where repetitive scanning mode would mean that the same amount of point and the LiDAR would be scanning over the same area multiple times, forming a data set with very high density of points. So where just a bit of background, typically in LiDAR survey, how we determine the, we don't look at resolution in the same way as RGB, but we look at the density of points. Where I say in a set square meter, how many points do we have? Say if we have 100 points per square meter, that's the density of the data set. Or if we have 10 points per square meter, that data is a lot less dense. So that's where repetitive scan mode comes in, where if we want very high density, we can scan repetitively over the same area. 
or a non-repetitive stand, we try to normalize and aims to normalize, say, at 100 points per square meter throughout the entire data set. So moving on to the second sensor on the Zenmuse L1, it's the RGB sensor. So this RGB sensor, it's very similar to the Phantom 4 RTK RGB sensor. There's 20 megapixel, one inch in one sensor. It's using a mechanical shutter, which of course eliminates all the rolling and shutter distortion when we're flying at high speed. It provides real-time color info where once we have the RGB sensor and the LiDAR sensor itself, we are able to automatically merge the point cloud and the RGB imagery to form colorized point cloud, which in previous workflows, if your LiDAR sensor is not integrated in a single unit with RGB sensors, you would have to process first your point cloud data from your LiDAR, then your photogrammetry data from the RGB camera, then only do a alignment to form colorized point cloud. And that's where one of the key benefits of the L1 comes in. We don't have to go through that tedious process again and really streamlines the entire work processing workflow. So another key component with the Zenmuse L1 is it has a industrial grade high accuracy IMU sensor on board where the function of the IMU is really to measure the drone's real-time acceleration, angular velocity, the aircraft speed and so on, where this information it's extremely important to be integrated and synced during the data collection phase, allowing us to achieve extremely high reliability and precision. So the relative survey grade accuracy stated by DJI is it has a survey accuracy of 5 cm and absolute accuracy of 10 cm while flying at an altitude of 50 meters. So of course, we would put that to the test during our demonstration and comparison with traditional LiDAR survey in episode two of the video itself. So coming to the last feature of the Zenmuse L1 sensor is of course the integrated gimbal as well. Um, DJI has always been known for their flagship gimbal and stabilization technology where um, the, the L1 ships on a 3-axis stabilized gimbal out of the box. So the purpose and the main function of having an integrated gimbal for the LiDAR sensor compared to say other LiDAR modules which are not integrated on a gimbal is that we are able to capture number one real-time information and point cloud on the remote control itself. Furthermore, we are able to have much more flexibility in terms of the direction and the angle that we are capturing data from. For example, if you wanted to do, say, a point cloud survey of, say, a telco cell tower, traditionally with a downward-facing LiDAR or a fake LiDAR mount, you would then have to generate multiple flights, first at another position, then at multiple angles. While using the integrated gimbal, you could adjust for the different angles on the go, which, of course, saves a lot of time and provides a lot more flexibility in the data acquisition phase. So in conclusion, covering the four key features of the Zenmuse L1, of course, the LiDAR sensor itself, the RGB sensor, the IMU, as well as the integrated gimbal, this DJI Zenmuse L1 really sets a new standard for aerial LiDAR surveying. And the key feature is, of course, we are able to achieve such a feat of technology at a fraction of the cost of traditional LiDAR on the market right now. Because that's what we will see in the coming months and years. There will be a lot more service providers starting to offer LiDAR services um, it becomes and the technology becomes a lot more accessible to end clients which in turn would open up new technologies and different applications that we may have not of, even thought of yet right now another thing is of course being DJI when they ship the Samuels L1 the software the data acquisition processing it's all fully integrated into the uh, ecosystem itself where using the DJI Terra we can immediately and very easily process the point cloud data after flying and after, after acquisition. So there is no more investment required in any third-party software or analytics tool, unless of course there are very specialized needs uh, according to each industry. So to sum it up, we believe that the Zenmuse L1 is a faster, easier, and much more efficient tool for LiDAR survey, where we would expect to see a lot more GIS professionals to integrate and to use the Zenmuse L1 as part of their area surveying toolbox for the months and years to come. All right. So this is how we mount the DJI Zenmuse L1 sensor onto the DJI Matrix 300 RTK platform. Because you remove the caps first um, and remove the cap from the Matrix 300. You will then align the white dot onto the red dot on the sensor mount itself. Click it in and just turn so that the red dot aligns with the mounting. So once that is secured, you just then turn on the drone itself. So then DJI would do its usual dance routine for the sensor for all its gimbal calibration. 
So of course, in real life situation, we will open the cover itself. But um, since we are not flying it now, we just keep it on for protective. You can see that it's stabilized. So that's all I have for you today in the unboxing video of the DJI Zen Muse L1 sensor. I hope that everyone enjoyed the video and learned a lot of valuable information from it. Don't forget to follow our social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell notification to get updated on any latest updates. Remember to stay safe, sanitize your hands, wear your mask and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.